Now, some of you have been wanting a baby for years now. Maybe you have already been trying to become pregnant, or maybe you just found the thumbnail and the title of this video interesting. Anyhow, in this video, we will cover female infertility. We will cover what it is, I will discuss some useful tips and tricks, and of course, potential treatment options. So make sure to watch the whole video so you don't miss any important information. For those of you who are meeting for the first time, my name is Raoul, I'm a medical doctor from the Netherlands, and it's my mission to medically educate you, my viewer, because educated people make healthier decisions. So let's get learning and let's get started. Now, before I can explain female infertility to you, it's first important to recap the basic anatomy of the female genital tract as well as its functions. In a nutshell, the female genital tract consists out of the vagina, which is the tube that connects the vulva and the uterus, the cervix, which is a donut shaped hole that connects the uterus and the vagina. Your cervix also stretches open in medical terms, dilates during childbirth. The uterus itself, also called the womb, which is a pear shaped organ consisting out of mostly muscle tissue. It roughly has the size of a fist and the uterus is the place where a fetus would grow during pregnancy. Next, the fallopian tubes, which are two narrow tubes that run from the ovaries to the uterus. And lastly, the ovaries themselves. They store the eggs and produce hormones like estrogen, progesterone and testosterone. These hormones play a huge role in your menstrual cycle as well as during your pregnancy. So, these are the basic components of the female genital tract. However, in order to become pregnant, a complex cascade of steps all needs to occur. If one step misses, someone will not become pregnant. The first step is that one of the ovaries needs to release a matured egg. This egg is picked up and transported through one of the fallopian tubes. Then there needs to be sexual intercourse, where a man ejaculates sufficient amounts of healthy sperm into the vagina. The sperm then swims through the vagina, through the cervix, into the uterus and ultimately into the correct fallopian tube to reach the egg for fertilization. The fertilized egg then travels down the fallopian tube into the uterus, where it attaches, or implants in other words, to the inside of the uterus and starts to grow. And for this growth process to occur correctly, your body needs to be able to make the right concentration of hormones. As you might imagine, this is a very simplified version of an immensely complex process with a lot of moving parts. And if one of these parts, one of these steps, does not occur correctly or at the correct time, this can have huge consequences for a couple wanting to conceive a child. Or maybe it will not be able at all. Which brings us to infertility. And unfortunately, infertility is very common. About one in seven couples is infertile, which means they have been having frequent unprotected sexual intercourse for more than a year and they were not able to conceive a child. In about one third of those cases, this infertility is solely caused because of female factors. These causes of female infertility are often very difficult to diagnose, partly because there can be so many different factors which play in this immensely complex process. And in this video, we will therefore only cover the most common ones. First of all, ovulation disorders. This is a medical condition where a woman ovulates very irregularly or doesn't ovulate at all. This is one of the most common causes of female infertility and usually it is caused through a problem in your female sex hormones, the production of those hormones or the regulation of the concentration of these hormones. Common examples of an ovulation disorder are PCOS, hypothalamic dysfunction, primary ovarian insufficiency or increased levels of prolactin. Another common cause of female infertility is a problem with the fallopian tubes. As mentioned, the fallopian tubes transport sperm as well as the egg from the ovaries to the womb and the sperm from the vagina through the cervix from the womb to the egg, which usually is located at that time in the fallopian tube. As mentioned, the female egg and the sperm need to be able to find each other in the fallopian tubes. So, if those are damaged or blocked, the egg can't get fertilized. This damage to the fallopian tubes could be caused by severe inflammation, for example, due to chlamydia or chorea, or through previous surgery. 
Furthermore, another common cause of female infertility is endometriosis. This occurs when tissue, normally typical for the uterus, implants and grows in other places in your abdomen. This extra tissue can cause serious complaints and sometimes require surgery to be removed. All of this can cause scarring, which can block the fallopian tubes. In addition, endometriosis can also potentially disrupt the implantation of a fertilized egg into the uterus wall. There are also multiple other problems to the uterus or the cervix, which could potentially cause female infertility. The most common examples are polyps or tumors in the uterus, an unusual shape of the uterus, a narrowing of the cervix, or problem with the mucus the cervix produces. This can create problems for the sperm trying to pass through the cervix. Lastly, in a lot of cases, no specific cause for infertility is found. In those cases, it is thought that a lot of minor factors in both partners, man and female, are taught together to cause the infertility. This can be very frustrating, but there is a silver lining. In a percentage of those cases, the minor causes seem to be resolved by themselves and those couples will be able in the future to receive a child or conceive a child. Which brings us to one of the most important questions in this video, at least for me and my channel. Could you please click the like and subscribe button? These videos cost me a lot of time and effort to make and I hope you're learning a lot. If you do, then please click those buttons. It will mean the world to me and it will make me able to help more people. It's free, you can always change your mind. And in return, you will get notified each week with a new awesome medical video. Now let's continue with actual important questions. When should you see your doctor? If you're 35 years or younger of age, it's often recommended that you first try to get pregnant for at least a year. If unsuccessful, then please visit your doctor for testing and treatment. If you're 35 to 40 years of age, visit your doctor when you have been trying for about six months. And if you're 40 years or older, then please visit your doctor right away if you're trying to conceive a child. Here, it is also important to mention that you should visit your doctor if your menstrual cycle takes more than 35 days, which is too long, or if it takes less than 21 days, which is too short. Both can indicate problems with the regularity of your ovulation, and therefore you should visit your doctor. Which brings us to some tips and tricks to potentially increase your levels of fertility. Although here, it is also important to mention that not all causes of infertility are preventable, although it can't hurt to increase your chances. So, maintain a healthy weight and eat a healthy diet with plenty of fruits and vegetables. Don't smoke, limit your alcohol consumption and avoid illicit drugs. Minimize and manage your stress, exercise regularly, avoid lubricants during sex, discuss the medication you're using with your doctor as those might also affect your fertility and lastly, if you're not currently trying to get pregnant, always practice safe sex, as certain STIs can lead to infertility when they're not treated. Now, if those tips didn't help you and you are worried that indeed you might be infertile as a couple, then please contact your doctor. He or she might help you to find out the extent of your symptoms and the underlying causes and problems. Your doctor might do this by asking about your symptoms, your medical history, the medicines you're using, and he will ask about your sex life. Afterwards, your doctor might do a physical examination or might recommend several tests, like blood work or an ultrasound. If necessary, your doctor will refer you to a gynecologist. And sometimes treatment might be necessary. In those cases, your doctor might recommend the treatment depending on your age, the underlying problems or cause, as well as your preferences. Furthermore, treatments can either attempt to restore your fertility can help you to get pregnant with sophisticated techniques. In addition, in those cases, it's always recommended that your partner also gets checked out. First of all, your doctor could prescribe certain medications which can help you to increase your fertility. These include medicines which regulate or stimulate your ovulation. These are most effective in women with ovulation disorders. These drugs function like natural hormones to trigger an ovulation. Examples are Clomiphene, citrate, manifur, folistim, ovidrel, and in addition, metformine, letrozole, and bromocryptine could also be prescribed. In addition, your doctor might also recommend certain surgical procedures to restore your fertility. 
Surgery can be used to correct problems concerning the anatomy of the uterus, like tumors or polyps, remove adhesions in the uterus, or to restore a blockage in your fallopian tubes. Here I want to mention that most of these surgical procedures only increase your chances of fertility a tiny fraction. In most cases, women are better off using in vitro fertilization, IVF. An IVF involves retrieving a matured egg from the ovaries, fertilizing them with sperm in addition to lab, and then transferring the embryos into the uterus after fertilization. IVF is one of the most effective assistant reproductive technologies, although it can be also very impactful on your personal situation. A cycle takes several weeks, requires frequent blood tests and daily hormone injections. Now, I hope this video was helpful to give you an overview of female infertility. If you have any questions, please discuss them with your personal doctor or put them in the description and I will do my best to answer each and every one of them. For those of you that can't get enough, check out the link in the description as well. It's a playlist with more awesome medical videos. And don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. It will mean the world to me. Thank you all so much for watching. Also check out the Instagram, TikTok and Facebook channel. And as always, I will see you next week with a new video. Bye bye.